Coming to you live from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, and all across the world, psychic, medium, and energetic healer, Sheena Metal brings you Messages from Spirit. Hi, and welcome to Messages from Spirit, only on Parapod TV. I am your host, Sheena Metal. I'm a psychic medium and an energetic healer, and an interfaith minister. And here's what we do every Wednesday at 2 o'clock Pacific time on Parapod TV. I'm a real psychic medium, and I talk to real people every week. They ask real questions. We work to get real messages from spirit. Then we have a real conversation, and hopefully get them the real answers and the real healing that they're seeking. Um, It's really great. It's really fun. It's really uplifting every week because the people who come on the show are so fantastic. And if you'd like to be one of them and join me and be a guest on the show, send me a text message, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. And um, if you're out of the U.S., you can hit me up on WhatsApp. My country code is 1, so it's one. 818-437-0886. And of course, visit my website, SheenaMetalSpiritual.com and visit me on uh, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and X everywhere. At Sheena Metal is how you find me on social media. Please follow me there. We do all kinds of fun stuff there. Every week on the show, I like to talk a little bit about something that's on my mind. It's just a little bit of an inspiration, a little healing for everyone. Um, it's really important to me that I give a little bit of healing, not just to folks who are on the show, but to all of you who are watching the show every week as well. And here's something that's really been on my mind. We all have our stories. And within our stories, there is, you know, two people are are having a memory of something There is, you know, my story and your story, you know, my truth, your truth, and the truth, I like to say. And I think sometimes it's important that we step out of our comfort zones, out of what is our truth, and into what could be the truth. Because oftentimes, as human beings, we we alter and change things to placate our fears for our own survival, Um, sometimes because there are things within us we don't want to look at. And, um, And it's wonderful to live your truth, right? We talk a lot in the spiritual community about living your truth. And that's a beautiful thing, and that's a wonderful thing, and it's an important thing. But unfortunately, sometimes your truth is not necessarily the truth. And it's important to uncover what in your truth is the truth. Um, Because we're always seeking that. We're always seeking the actual answers to things, finding the real answers to things. And when I work with clients, I find a lot that clients have held on to this idea, right, of how things are, and they've wrapped themselves around this belief. And sometimes it's it's not even what's happening. It's not even the real truth. And it, they've, they've suffered all this pain this whole time because they told themselves something was true that wasn't even true. And that's why sometimes looking beyond your truth at what is actually the truth can be a very powerful and uplifting thing. Because oftentimes your truth is holding you back more than if you just looked at, if you discovered the actual truth. Does that make sense? And it's hard because so many people take away our power and our ability to have our voice and our ability to feel heard and don't allow us to have our truth that we're conditioned to hold on 
so hard to our truth that sometimes we we let the truth fall by the wayside and that's not really how it's supposed to be either so sometimes it's about you have to just you know peel back those layers and find the truth seek the truth at all times and it's not just your truth sometimes it's other people's truths too it's important that we know what is actually really going on here on this earth at any time that affects your life um they say the truth will set you free and that this certainly is true the the truth will set you free Okay, so so something to think about. All right, and with that, we're going to do a message from Spirit. So uh, uh, don't forget, if you want to be a guest on the show, 818-437-0886. And uh, welcome to the show. Who are you and where are you coming in from? Hi. Hi. Hi, my name is Maria. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here, Maria. And where, uh, where, where are you from in the world? Uh, Washington. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm from Washington, and I like to know the message from the spread, and you are the person who can do that. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. What question do you have for me? So um, I'm actually in the process of divorce. I am actually don't know, is this the right way to do it? Is this the right time to do it? I have two kids as well. What's the future look like for me after the divorce? And is this... Uh, How's my financial condition afterwards? Well, the the timing looks good. I mean, is there ever a good time for divorce? I mean, there's really not. Mm -hmm. But keeping that in mind, the timing looks good. And it also needs to happen. Um, It's not something you're rushing into. It's something you've thought out for some time. And it definitely is the right decision for you. Um, But keep in mind that when I tap into timelines, and remember universe can always shift timelines. But when I tap into timelines, it looks like the divorce is going to take longer than you're anticipating it's going to take. And um, that's okay, because that's not unusual. But I want to make sure that you keep that in the back of your mind so you can stay relatively patient through the process. Mm. Does that make sense? Because the way I I feel you're feeling in your heart right now, Maria, you're just like, I'm done. And I want it done and it could be done tomorrow and that could still be too long. Yeah. So you want to like close your eyes, open them and boom, I'm divorced. (laughs) Um, Unfortunately with the way things work in the three dimensional world. And I also feel that your, your husband is going to push back and make it last longer than it even needs to last. Um, Just stay patient, stay cool. Know it's coming. Know you're allowed to have your life in the interim while you wait for it. And, and don't let yourself get psyched out with this idea that um, it's not happening yet. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so stressed out. All right. Just let it flow in its natural timeline. You follow up on your end. If he pushes back, whatever, eventually it's going to happen. You can't literally stop someone from divorcing you. Um, mm. Eventually, it will happen no matter what. So uh, do you think it'll this year or he going to drag it more than that? Oh, it looks like end of this year, beginning of next year. He's going to drag it out as long as he can. Oh. Um, also, keep in mind that the more you go with the flow and don't try to rush it, the better your financial compensation will be. Okay. Because the more you push back on him, the more he will try to take every penny. He, he still is kind of doing that. He is, yeah. He is, you are right. The more you rile him up, the more he will make it his mission to destroy you. Mm. So let him sometimes think he has some of the power mm. because in the end, you know you have the power mm. because you're 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 the one controlling your temperament throughout it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think afterwards, you know, you're going to be free Mm -hmm. And that's terrific. But I think even before that, um, before you actually even get to really feel the freedom, you've got a little bit of healing to do. And Mm -hmm. a a lot of that healing has already happened. And a lot of that healing will happen in the next time until the divorce is done, you know, Mm -hmm. almost a year. But Mm -hmm. then even after it's finally done, 
you're going to heal a little bit more. So just be prepared for these waves of healing and mm. know that they're a super good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. What about the financial aspect? I'm able to do my business. And what about the kids? It looks like you're going to be okay. And the kids are going to be well taken care of. I don't really see him fighting you on the kids. Okay. He will take care of the kids. Um, he's just hella mad at you. Yeah. You know? But he's yeah. not he's not mad at the kids. And and that's a good thing. Um, mm. That's kind of the thing that, you know, the only thing that's good is is that he'll make sure the kids have stuff. Um, it looks like it's going to be OK, sweetie. It's just going to be about patience. All right. And time. Yeah, yeah that's what I am doing and waiting for patiently and trying my best to do it. You're doing great, friend. I appreciate you. Thank you Thank so much you. for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank What you. What a great first caller. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Maria from Washington, it's going to be okay. We hate waiting for things, right? Um, it's hard. It's hard, hard, hard when you are waiting for things from people. And divorce is never, ever, ever, ever easy. Some of my clients that I've watched go through divorces in the last however many years, man, if I ever thought I wanted to get married, I got to tell you, they're... <laughs> Not now. Um, no, not now. Uh, it's hard. It, you know, relationships are hard enough when you get legality into relationships. I mean, relationships are hard. Living together is harder. Living with another human. Then you take into that um, money and legal contracts. And man, it's a lot. So, um We all wish we're all going to send Maria some love and let's do another message from spirit. Hi. Hi. Hi, my name is Ulisa. Hi, how uh, are you? Where are you from in the world? I'm from Colorado. Beautiful. And what's your question for me, sweetie? My dad, he passed away like about maybe seven years ago. I'm so sorry, sweetie. That's okay. Thank you. He passed away like seven years ago. And right after he passed away, I feel like everything has been going upside down. Yeah. Like financially, like right now I am living in my brother's home and I have no job. I just got a job actually. Like I just started and I'm oh, hoping this job goes out really, it turns out really good. Yeah, it looks not good. like my last job. Yeah, no, last job wasn't good. Yeah, no, the last job wasn't very well. It wasn't very good. There was a lot of lying in it. Yeah. Students, uh, I used to work as a janitor, and the students would lie about me, saying things that weren't true. I'm so sorry, sweetie. You've been through it. Mm -hmm. So, is your Is your question what is your what is your question? Is it our how can I make better? it like is it, how can I how can things get better? Okay, that's my question. So a couple things, okay. First of all, our life path is sort of like this, right? It's hills and valleys, and mm -hmm. sometimes a lot of things get thrown at us at once obstacles and challenges, I like to call them, so we can grow past them. And I don't have all the answers for why that happens. Only spirit knows that. But I can tell you that sometimes they're related to grief. Somebody passes and you feel like everything else happens at one time. Um, also, it, it feels sometimes like when you are grieving someone, the, the energy that you put towards the grief everything in your life becomes kind of topsy-turvy. And sometimes it's because when you lose somebody that you really love, Felissa, it's almost mm -hmm. like you, there's all these things in your life that's like BS you don't want to put up with anymore because now you're grieving. And um, I know when my mom passed and it was very difficult for me, there were a lot of people in my life, a bunch of people in my life that didn't treat me very well. And I was like, oh God, you all have to go now. So I think mm -hmm. sometimes the standards for what you want for your life change when somebody you love a lot passes. And I think with you, it's a combination of both those things. You know, God is throwing at you challenges to grow 
and your dad is sort of folded into that, your dad's passing, at the same time, you're different for your dad's passing. You're a different person now, and you want different things from your life. You don't want to work a terrible job. You don't want to put up with those kids being horrible to you. Um, you, you know what I mean? You want a good life now. And that's great. So you're just going through a transition. This job is going to be much better. Things in your life are going to get much better. Give it until the end of the year. You'll be in your own place. And, and everything is really going to be okay. You just sort of have to breathe through this time. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know how difficult it is. I, I completely understand what you're going through and, and how hard it is. Um, but sometimes you just have to kind of just keep going, right? Just like finding Nemo, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Sometimes you, cause you'll, you will swim out of this bad time and into mm -hmm. a time that's better. What you don't want to do is pull back inside yourself, stop doing things, stop going to work saying like, well, I don't, everything sucks anyhow. So who cares? It's cause it's easy to do that. And I understand the urge to want to do that. So just stay in motion, right? F find a hobby, go to work, <coughs> hang out with your family, do things that make you happy and, and just, just breathe through the time and things will get better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. You take care Thank of you. you. Let's all send you Alyssa some love. We're sending you love, sweetheart. It's hard. Grief is hard. It's a hard time. I can tell you honestly that I don't remember a lot about the year my mom died. I mean, I do, like, I remember, like, like spikes of things. You know that thing people can do with their cameras? I don't even know how to do it where you fuzz out the background and you can be seen, but the background's all a blur. Um, that's kind of how that whole year of 2016 was for me. I, I remember, I remember things, but I don't remember a lot. Some things really stood out. Other things, uh, I, 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 I don't remember. So a grieving year is hard. And oftentimes, and God only knows why this is, ha ha, pun intended. God only knows why this is. Um, when, when we're going through a grieving year, spirit throws other stuff in. And I, I don't know why that is, but that's what happens. So keep the faith and just breathe, sweetie, and it's going to be okay. All right. Everything's going to be okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do another message from Spirit. Super excited. Hi. Hi. I'm Tommy. Hi, Tommy. How are you, sweetheart? Where are you from in the world, babe? I am from Modesto, California, and I am fantastic. I am so glad. What is your question for me? You're all kind of mystique -y, like you're in witness protection. <laughs> It's funny. Uh, I did a Zoom podcast a year ago, and I looked like the Invisible Man. I had my sunglasses on. The background was all messed up. I'm sorry about this. I That's really am. Right. All you need is the all you need is the voice thing that looks like hell of a <laughs> voice, and then you'd be all set. You'd totally be in witness protection. I feel like um, I'm asking you to answer questions about a cult you were involved in as a child. Yeah. So, um, what's your question for me, sweetheart? Okay, this is a long-winded one. Um, okay. About a month and a half ago, I was reading a memoir of a podcast guest of mine, and in it she mentioned how she had met her boyfriend, who she's been with for the last decade or so, and she mentioned that she had um, met him in 2013 at a pop culture trivia night, and that's what I was doing in 2013. I was playing pop culture trivia and I didn't fall in love. I won prizes, drank a lot of beer and made a lot of people upset. And <laughs> I immediately started crying for about two weeks and just trying to reevaluate, you know, turning 40 and all that stuff. And I thought to myself, am I ever going to meet the one? And that's my question for you. Am I ever going to meet the one? Absolutely, sweetheart. And I understand sometimes when you want that so badly, you put so much effort into yourself to attract the right person. 
And then you go on like a Facebook or something and you see all these people like married yeah. 30 years, married 20 years. And you're like, what am I doing wrong? Exactly. Um, I see when I look into your life that um, there has been, there have been a lot of, you had a lot of struggles and, and turmoils. And I see like a, a giant thing, a, a palm reader would tell you it was like a crack in your lifeline, but did you have like a really traumatic thing happen that you sort of think of your life as before and after? Exactly. Yeah. I had a car crash nine years ago and I spent 30 days in a coma. Oh, okay. All right. And when you look at your life, do you sort of think of it as before and after that accident? I do. Uh, there's no other way to do it, you know, because I feel like, you know, I've grown a lot since before the accident, you know, and I've also remained the same in a lot of ways. But like, you know, I think I've matured a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. So I think you have grown in, in soul years so much. Mm -hmm. um, but Unfortunately, it's kind of set your life path back a little bit. As your spiritual self has grown, your life path, that accident put sort of a hitch in the timeline. Does that yes. make sense? And it because does. Because you emerge from that coma a more evolved and um, in tune and connected person, because how could you not be for having survived all of that? Um, it's, it's the, the problem is that now you're trying to find someone that matches where you're at mm -hmm. and you're finding that a lot of people, you know, don't have that same level of connection. Exactly. They haven't been through what you've been through. They don't get it. And, um, Sometimes it makes you feel like you're kind of wandering the earth by yourself, doing exactly. everything you can to help humanity and enlighten humanity, but not feeling like so much is personally coming back to your own life. Like you become a, a walker and a teacher, but you're not participating in life enough. I, I totally agree. That's exactly where, where I feel I'm at, you know, and also because of uh, the changing of the times and stuff, I, I rarely ever meet people who, you know, are, are fully on board with my point of view and I'm fully on board with their point of view. And, you know, we live in a sensitive time where like, you know, I, I can't engage in locker room talk like I used to and stuff. And it's just like, I feel like I'm not being truly authentic when I do that. You know, I just haven't been able to make any like connections right you've become a different person and now it's just important sweetheart that you wait settle into who you are really work on falling in love with you and this new you right because the different yes. you than you were before in some ways and and just put that out there and somebody who matches your energy will come it's also important that when you put it out there that you're looking for your soulmate twin flame life mate to come that you're very open as to all of the earthbound things about them. Does that make sense? Height, it does. Weight, ethnicity, religion, gender. You're very fluid about all of those things. It's really this like-minded soul connection that you're looking for. Right. And, you know, they say that opposites uh, do attract and stuff. I have never, that has never been the case with me. I, I, I can't think of a time when I actually meshed with, with somebody that uh, was the complete opposite of me. But yes, I do hear what you're saying. And I, I agree. Yeah. You need to find somebody who, who matches you spiritually. And that person will come just the, in the meantime, spirit is saying, just stay open. And try not to feel jaded by the fact that it hasn't happened yet because not everybody meets their person in their 20s and yours is coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be 41 this year. And uh, that person I was talking about, she was like 46, 47 when she met uh, that guy. So, I, you know, I guess it's around the corner in the 40s. That's where it's at. Absolutely. You know? The 40s is where it's at, baby. So, <laughs> all right, honey. Thank you for the great question. And I'm here whenever you need me. I appreciate you. We're all going to thank you for Sheena. Thank for you. Tommy to find the soulmate for him because 
uh, he, he's a nice soul and he definitely deserves it. Thank you, friend. Um, it's hard, man. Again, should I say it again? People are hard. Life is hard. People are harder. Relationships are the hardest. And we're all just doing the best we can. So keep that in mind. And boy, we're having great people today so far. Really wonderful people. Um, yeah. People are hard. Life is hard. People are harder. I don't know what quite to say. Um, but we're, we're figuring it out um, on the planet, all of us every day, right? Uh, so, all right. Um, if you want to be a guest on the show, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. And um, I'm super excited to have you all here. I even have a special group just for people who have been on the show. And um, I'm so excited to have you in there too. Okay. I'm getting ready to do another message from spirit now. Let's do another message from spirit. I'm ready when you are. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, sister? I'm good. Who are you? Where are you coming in from, love? My name's Sky, and I'm also coming in from Colorado. It's the Colorado day. It's awesome. It seems to be the place to be. It's all about Colorado today and Modesto. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's never about Modesto, but today it was. Um, what is your question for me, sweetheart? How may I help you? Oh, um, well... I'm in an odd spot and I need to know where my finances are coming from. I got into manifestation several years ago and I've had such wonderful blessings. Um, I do heavy meditation every day Beautiful. and um, I walk with gratitude constantly. And I mean, oh, I'm going to cry constantly. Good. That's um, so beautiful, baby. That's where it's at, right? Well, I've been asking God and my higher self. Where are the finances coming to move? I got a great job offer. I'm getting help being certified in this uh, white collar industry. Okay. And I've been blessed with everything but cash. I've oh. received, like for this past year, I've received a place to live. Um, everything being taken care of for me on all sorts of levels just by doing manifestation and when I ask God what's coming I've received several very distinct signs like um, the place I've manifested that I'm in now I, I dreamt of a creek with mostly a dry creek bed I found a silver spoon in it with a wedding date from 1906 carved in this silver spoon I wow. found a, a nest with an egg in it a nest egg I had a bird build a very decadent and elaborate, and I mean, I've never seen such a decadent and elaborate orb of a nest right above my main door. So all of these wonderful, wonderful signs. And when I asked God today, how my finances are showing up, what is it? Do I have to be somewhere or know someone or is there something I can do? Um, God said I was talking to you and I'd find out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah, yeah. God never lets us down. Um, yeah, it just, this is what spirit is saying that, that for, for people who really live, are really living their most connected life right spiritually um money is always the hardest thing um because everything that you're about is not money does that make sense like it money does because god said if you can get anything that you want why do you need money exactly because of all the little things, I, I, 
right. Manifesting because gas from my car, manifesting dog food, manifesting <laughs> uh, right. the ability, like I've never been to this city that offered me this wonderful job. And that's part of the issue. They need me to work for potentially six months full time unpaid as I learned the secrets of the trade. And as worthy as I think that is, I'm right. still applying in that city for a secondary backup job. And they're like, well, fine, work for us from eight to five, and you work for them from five to 10. And I go, right. Um, right. Um, that's not the direction I wanted to be going in. And so, I've been praying for some sort of rather large manifestation that would allow me not only to move sufficiently into a place that would be also earning me money and start my investing and still be with this company because the benefits of the whole situation with this job are incredible. But the little part-time job I'm looking to pick up at that's what I have my degree in. That's what I've done for a living around America. And I'm very, very good at that also. So I don't want to work for 15 hours a day doing two things that I love. And getting paid for so, a third of them. Yeah. And I know that the, the, the big time job is commission and I know I'm going to kick some butt. I really, truly feel it in my soul that, oh yes, but just how to get there. Where am I going to be? How yes. am I? If, if I had a large lump sum, then I would be able to even go take a trip just to check out the lay of the land, see which neighborhood I would feel safe living in, and then go ahead looking for something that would help take care of itself. Like, why live in your own house when you could buy a quad and have the three other tenants be? taking care of everything so you yourself are then able to pursue what you need to uh, it, 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 yeah right so I'm, 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 I'm calling the big getting, guns i'm calling the big brains uh, and, and saying what, girl yeah you're getting that. <laughs> the saying that you are coming out of a place right where you have been super 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 spiritual and that's beautiful. And you've done so much great spirit work and you've raised your vibration and elevated your spirit. And it's gorgeous. Now you need to just pull yourself out and you're just starting to, and be a, a little bit more earthbound for a while and, and navigate master. You know what I mean? The craps table that is the earth for a little bit. And then once you get, rooted in the next thing then you can go back to the super spiritual work again and it's hard it's hard when spirit tells you this way no this way no this way no be more spiritual now be less spiritual but unfortunately that's part of the growth is for them to be that kind of a coach that gives you directions to zig and zag in different ways and now is just the time and you're speaking great truth about it you, you're, you're really getting to that place of how am I going to navigate this, this rock right now? And that's really where you need to be. And when you get totally into that mindset, things will open up for you. And once you get settled and you've got money coming in and you don't have to work all that much, then you can start going back to more spiritual elevation. Does that make sense? Yes. But for right now, knowing that my lease is going to be up in another month and me moving to that city just seems obvious from all the signs. 100%. Um, what can I do about the logistics of having to move me, myself, and everything somewhere where I've never been? I don't know where I'm going to live or how I'm going to take care of it. Yeah. That just, I, I, I need some sort of something, something, something. You I'm God saying, girl. You need to get yourself there and feel the vibe of that city. And once you get yourself there, things will start to open up. So how do I do that? Because like I said, I've been going through a period where I can manifest everything but money. And I've actually spoken to God about I'm applying to all these jobs. Nothing's working out. And God said, no, have some faith. I want you to lean into me. Right. Don't worry about a job. And so oddly, 
I have to say, I've, I've manifested a shopping spree. <laughs> I got to go out and get a whole new wardrobe. I just, it, it, I, I didn't, it, I just asked. And about two weeks later, and it wasn't cash handed to me, but it was kind of cash handed to me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering like, so keep that same belief that you will be taken care of, that God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And that spirit will bring to you the opportunity to go check the city out. Just have the faith. It's coming. All right. I'm here when you need me, sweetheart. Let's all say some Thank prayer you. for Sky. All right. I'm so happy. I'm so excited for the things that are awaiting you, sweetheart. Thank you. Take care, honey. It's hard sometimes when spirit's answer is, relax, we got it taken care of. You're like, really, God? But it is true. Sometimes it's just the surrender into the belief that you are going to be taken care of. Um. And you have to believe. That's And it's so hard. Um, but you got it. You got this. Okay. Yeah, all of you that are watching that are feeling like sky right now, you got this. Come be a guest on the show. Send me a text message. Um, 818-437-0886. And that number is also on my website, sheenametalspiritual.com. If you're out of the United States, you can also send me a message on WhatsApp. One is my country code. So 1-818-437-0886. All right. 1-818-437-0886. All right, let's do another message from Spirit. Hi. Hi. How uh, are you? I'm good, sweetheart. Who are you and where are you coming to me from? So my name is Lauren, um, and I'm actually from Colorado today as well. It's the Colorado show. Isn't that <laughs> weird? Yeah. So not sure if you remember me, but we actually um, had a call back in July, and yes. I was living in Atlanta then. Yes, absolutely. And so, Yep. So now I've made my way to Colorado um, and I've been out here. Yeah. That's so exciting. I'm so happy for you. How are you liking Colorado? I love it. I've been here for three months and I've just totally had a, a shift in my life, like my energy, my mood, um, just the way I, you know, look at things and I'm just so grateful to be here. And I'm so happy that you're here. I think that's so wonderful. And I'm so glad that you're someplace that you feel really good. I think that's fantastic. What's your question for me today, sweetie? So my question is kind of broad maybe, but I just wanted to kind of check in with you and just see if maybe you had any messages from spirit that, you know, were popping out at you. I've had um, kind of some health things going on. Um, since I moved here, which is strange because I'm usually really healthy. And so um, it hasn't been anything major, but just, you know, a, a few little hiccups along the way. And so I'm just wondering, is that like significant at all? Um, or just, you know, any general messages that you might be getting? It feels like you're getting energetically used to the new area. Okay. And sometimes that can affect your health a little bit. So spirit is saying, don't sweat it. It's okay. It happens. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, but what they're really talking to me about Lauren is, is, um, have you been sort of on a journey to find the love for yourself? Yes. <laughs> That's really what they're talking about is now is the time for you to really fall in love with you. Yeah. And that for you, that means unraveling and unpeeling some layers to get down to where you really live energetically. Does that make sense? Yes. And I definitely resonate with that 100%. Has there been like, since you moved to Colorado, like a lot of crying? I mean, not necessarily bad crying. Sometimes crying comes from 
overwhelm, from the unraveling, from getting to the core of you? I see lots of crying. Yeah, um, it's more like just sporadic. Um, it'll just kind of come out of nowhere. I'll just feel like an overwhelming need to just cry and then I will and then I'll feel so much better. Yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. You're kind of purging all of that stuff that was so unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And now that you're in this place where you literally can breathe the clean air, literally yeah. and figuratively, mm -hmm. um, all of that stuff is kind of coming out in the form of tears. And as it's coming out, as you're releasing all that toxicity, it's affecting your health a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's temporary as you release it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like how mm -hmm. if you lose a bunch of weight, your liver gets fatty because it's processing all that fat, but then it mm -hmm. calms down. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. Your, your energetic system and in turn, your physiological system is purging all this stuff that as you're getting rid of all these things energetically that you don't need. Yes. And I appreciate you saying that because I feel like that's what I was feeling, but I, I didn't have that confirmation. So I appreciate that. So they're saying lots of showers, baths, drink water, um, purification things like put lemon and lime in your water. Um, you. Lots of breathing, lots of laughing lots of moving, just everything you can do to get it out, get it out. Lots of crying, lots of sleeping, okay. like all the things that just nurture your system yes. as you're releasing all this stuff. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And then you're so going to be okay. Thank you. Yeah, I feel, I feel really good. Um, so I'm, I'm excited and I appreciate it. I'm really happy for you, sweetie. And I'm so happy that you're you're on this journey to sort of like, you know, uh, a dig to the surface I and mean, dig from the surface until you find you. Yep. I'm, I'm excited to get there, but I'm also excited for the journey. So that's awesome. You're in good shape, sweetheart. I'm here when you need me. Thank you so much. Everybody watching, let's send lots of love uh, to Lauren on her journey because that's exciting. And to everybody who's on the journey right now, Let's send them love because that's exciting. In a lot of ways, aren't we all really on that journey? Aren't we always on that journey? I remember somebody once who was maybe not the most in tune person said to me, you're always working on yourself. When are you going to be done? And I'm thinking, I don't know. Never? Ask spirit? I don't think the answer is ever done. Um, I think we just keep working and working and working and working on ourselves. And I love that story, but... Maybe not everybody loves that story as much as me. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, I love that story. Send me a text message, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. And um, also visit my website, sheenametalspiritual.com and get to know me better. And follow me on Facebook, if you would, uh, and on Instagram and on TikTok and on YouTube and on X at Sheena Metal, the little at sign, and then just my name, Sheena Metal. If there's extra numbers or letters or something in the name, it's probably not me. I'm just at Sheena Metal everywhere. Um, what a great time to be here. Love being on Parapod TV. Thank you so much to my dear friend, Parapod's owner and operator, Tony Sweet. He's also the founding of uh, Earthly Beings Nonprofit. Uh, the Parapod Festival, and the sister station to Parapod, UBN Go. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your television family. And to my dear engineer and producer, Emery, who makes all of our lives easier. Thank you, sweetheart. You're the wind beneath my wings. Until I see you next time, seek peace, live in love, lead with kindness, embrace unity, always work to raise your vibration and know that you are love and you are loved, and you're so loved by me. Uh, this is uh, Messages from Spirit. I'm Sheena Metal, your host, and we are here every Wednesday at two o'clock Pacific time, only on Parapod TV. I'll see you next week. Take care of you. Namaste. You are loved.